Designing a city is an enticing opportunity that has attracted great artists, architects and urban designers over the past few centuries. And by 2050, 70% of the world's population will live in urban areas, so we'll need a little imagination to make this work for everyone. We might take inspiration from past efforts, or not, as you'll see. So join me in this chronological walk through the zany, wacky and occasionally visionary history of future cities. Okay, I'll admit, this one is a balloon, but its designer thought that it would be a livable habitat. Etienne Gaspar Robert was a Belgian magician, Celt surprise, who conceived of a balloon city that would float over France, dragging its supplies with it. He imagined that 60 scientists would live on the balloon and it would measure 46 metres across. This one never went past the design stage, understandably, but we can still applaud the endeavour. Before he got into razors, King Camp Gillette, what a name, wanted to build a city called Metropolis around Niagara Falls. He imagined that it would just vaguely go in this area here. Details were thin on the ground. He believed the world only needed one city and felt that he knew how to get it done. I guess that's why he called it something as all-encompassing as simply Metropolis. Metropolis would consist of a central manufacturing facility owned by the public, and the whole structure would look a bit like a beehive. In his utopia, Gillette imagined money would pass into the oblivion of an ignorant age. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't try that line in Gillette's shareholder meetings. Okay, now we're talking. This is the kind of future city I'm here for. Before the World's Fair in Paris in 1900, artists were asked to imagine the world in the far-off year 2000. Pretty much all of the drawings involved either being in the air or under the sea. Like this colourful vision of Paris with all manner of flying contraptions. The confectioner Theodore Hildebrand from Berlin took it seriously, and rightly so. For the World's Fair, his factory produced a set of 12 futuristic postcards that imagined a future German city. It imagined this panic-inducing underwater city. A city where men would both fly and smoke at the same time. Although, I'm informed that did actually happen in the 1970s. And this lovely idea of a city on train tracks that moves when it gets bored of the scenery. Or the neighbours. As you can probably tell, we'll change gear quite a few times on this journey. The next city is a little more serious and it was dreamt up by the architect Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier thought the future city should be rational and ordered and that this would have an impact on social behaviour too. He took his inspiration for Vie Radieuse from the layout of the human body, apparently. It was designed to contain an effective means of transportation as well as an abundance of green space and sunlight. And, get this, it was to be built on nothing less than the grounds of demolished European cities. He really wanted to start all over again. The technocratic elite, the industrialists, financiers, engineers and artists would all be located in the city centre, while the workers would be removed to the fringes of the city. There's no way that could go wrong. It wasn't built, but it was influential and it has a mixed legacy. It inspired buildings, such as this one in Marseille, and Oscar Niemeyer used its modernist ideas when designing the new Brazilian capital, Brasilia. This is another serious one. Frank Lloyd Wright imagined a decentralised city where technology enabled citizens to connect with services without the need for a central meeting point. I've actually seen these models at MoMA and they do look a little sparse, but the ideas are thought-provoking. Broadacre City aimed to provide people with space, a luxury we could now enjoy due to the automobile. With that space, every home would have an acre of land for raising food. In the 1930s, securing adequate food remained a concern in the US. Where Le Corbusier proposed regimented repetition, 
Wright felt that the city should always adapt to its changing landscape. These ideas have very much come back into fashion in the 21st century. Okay, now we are firmly back in the land of whimsy. Lebius Woods' designs were not for any specific city, although this design looks like it's attached to the Eiffel Tower somehow. Woods was known for creating fantastical imaginary worlds, but insisted that this floating city above Paris could be brought to life. He said he wanted to go beyond pure Euclidean forms, and you would have to admit he did just that. As mad as all of this looks, he is said to have influenced architects including Zaha Hadid. Yep, Epcot. As I'm sure you know, Epcot stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, and it was Walt Disney's master plan for a city that would act as a hub of the future. Brands would be invited to test and exhibit new technology, while the 20,000 citizens of Epcot would all work and live within one of the city's three rings. Nobody would be unemployed, and nobody would own their own property. In fact, here is Walt Disney larking about during his pitch video to the state of Florida, asking them to back the plant. And this is the multimodal transport hub he imagined at the heart of this city. Now let's take a look at the German architect Wolf Hilbert's idea for a self-assembling sea city called Autopia Ampere. Hilbert planned to use the process of electro-deposition to create an island that would build itself in the water. It would begin as a series of wire mesh armatures connected to a supply of low voltage direct current produced by solar panels. The electrochemical reactions would draw up sea minerals over time, creating walls of calcium carbonate on the armatures. It continues to inspire future city visions, like this one for example, and its central idea that cities should be entwined with the natural environment is increasingly popular. Yeah, they really did call this one Soak City. It strikes me as the kind of idea Joe Bluth would pitch to the Sitwell company in Arrested Development. The design by Crab Studios aims to transform East London by, well, flooding it and starting again. The new area would be populated by semi-vegetated structures. Anyone that's been in East London on a Friday night will know that is not such a stretch of the imagination. Naturally, we end on the moon. We could have gone for Mars, but let's save those crazy notions for the sequel to this video. Jan Werner, the Director General of the European Space Agency, came up with the idea for a moon village that would start small and expand over time as the moon dwellers made technological breakthroughs. He sees this as similar to the original polar expeditions and argues we'd be better off figuring things out on the moon before we head off to Mars. Can't argue with that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to watch more videos like this in future. Thank you very much.